Uh, I drink You're more. Laughing. I drink. I drink more water now, but I definitely, uh, I definitely still do the tequila. <laughs> I love the tequila. Hey, it's your girl, Emily Curl with iHeartRadio, and welcome back to our studio. We are in person hanging with country music artist Mitchell <laughs> Tinfinney. What's up? Mitchell, it's so good to see you again. I am so happy to be here in person. It's awesome. Can't, can't complain. We were just talking the last time you were here, you were playing a show to like a full crowd in yeah. our studios, and now it's just us in the office. How does it feel doing it's, press in person again back it, here? It feels much bigger now because, yeah, it was, we had the whole band up here and everybody. Um, but it's awesome. I love this building. I love coming and visiting iHeart and I love New York City. So happy to be back here and be with you. I love it. When you're in New York City, do you have a certain place you always have to stop? Honestly, not really, because I'm always trying to try new things. I know I'm going to a new steakhouse tonight, which I'm excited about. Uh, but me and my band, we love just the 99 cent pizza slice with the, that buffalo sauce. It's just, it's simple. Why is it's it so easy. good? It's baked differently. I, I don't know, but like, we love it. It's like, literally, we have to go there every time. I love it. Now, we have a lot to talk about. So let's go ahead and dive yeah. into your new project, Midtown Diaries. <laughs> First off, congratulations. Thank, thank you. Taking back to the creation of it. So yeah. where were you? Who was with you? What studio? Give me the full rundown. Oh, man. It's a, a lot of studios combined a lot of my in-home studio a lot of incredible songwriters helped with this project in nashville um and just honestly a lot of time these songs have been collected over the last two and a half years three years um some even even the our single right now truth about you was written almost three years ago so it's uh it's pretty crazy how you know especially coming up with an ep and picking the songs for the ep like making the choice of what's going to make it and what's not you got to look back on all these songs you've written and feel like uh, which songs still relate to me right now who i am Ooh. right now and that's um that's kind of difficult sometimes because you have so many songs and it's like well you know after three years i could have written a song and i'm not be in that headspace at all again so interesting it yeah. was fun to kind of pick these and i and i liked and i gave a lot of variety i wanted people to be able to find their own song in it so it's cool to see the story of these songs the history of these songs the life of them to make it to an ep and now i get to you know share it with the world Let's talk about Truth About You because yeah. I love that song and you're spilling some tea on that song. <laughs> so walk me yeah. through a little bit of the inspiration behind that when you said this one was written a couple years ago. Yeah, um, my co-writer uh, with Thomas Archer and Matt Alderman, incredible writers. Matt came in with that kind of that title. He had heard something on a movie. I can't remember. It's like something, don't lie and I won't tell the truth, something like that. And I, you know, we worked it in. If you quit telling lies about me, tell the truth about you. And I was like, I know exactly how to write this song right now. Like, <laughs> let's go. We wrote that song pretty quick. And it's just that hook I always love. But then I honestly, I forgot about that song because we wrote, you know, we wrote so many others. And then my manager, you know, she showed it to me again. When we were looking for songs. I was like, I do love this song. I've always loved what it says. And, and then TikTok, you know, TikTok's a thing. And I was a little leery on TikTok. It's like, oh, another social media platform. And I put this song out just as a tester, just to kind of just, you know, to put a song out and, um, you know, a verse and a chorus. And it just kind of took a, its life or took a life of its own. I would post other stuff. People would be like, oh, cool post, but when are you putting well, out truth about the other you? One. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to listen to that. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it, they chose the single and that's how I want it. I want our fans to be able to be interactive and help us choose the songs we Ooh. cut. And, and this is, you know, 100% because of them. So do you think you'll continue to put out music like that, like this last Absolutely. one? Absolutely. And that's what I love about TikTok. Like we write so many songs and the world will never hear. So I love to share demos on that platform. That's what I've been able to do with, uh, you know, with TikTok is I, I get to share some songs that you might never ever get to hear, you know, ever. And I had a songwriter tell me, Mitchell, you'll be buried with your best songs. And that really hit me. And I was like, when? So now I like I love to show or, you know, put songs out there and then you get instant feedback. And, and I love that. It's yeah, like playing that's playing true. a sport. Like, you win or lose, right? At the end of the game, you win or lose. Well, it's kind of like that now with songs. I get to put them out and see what happens. Yeah, and it's like if they don't do as well as you think, then you just let them go. You're yeah, like, yeah, okay, like, that was. Well, they weren't gonna hear it anyway, so <laughs> it's out there. If somebody might like it, cool. If not, whatever. No, that one's all about relationships. So yeah. I have to ask you, what yeah. is the best relationship advice you think you've ever received, and who gave it to you? Uh, patience and my father, 100. <laughs> percent Be patient with each other. Grow with each other. Um, <clears throat> You know, you got to learn, you got to learn each other, especially when, when you, you know, as you mature in a relationship, when you get deeper into it, when you move into it with each other, when you're in each other's, you know, personal lives more than just, you know, dating. Um, there's a lot where you learn and, and patience for both sides mm. to, to actually learn, to learn to love each other 
um, I think that's the most important thing for sure. Totally. And, you know, we have that song down. So let's talk about a few, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a few more. Another one I had to bring up is To Us It Did. Yeah. I love that one because, again, I grew up in Georgia. And so there's so many things where I think yeah. back where I'm like, oh, man, I remember like driving my car, that moment of freedom. Yeah. What does this song take you back to when you think about it? Do you have a specific like memory in your mind? <laughs> it, it, yeah. Sonic parking lot in Brentwood, Tennessee. <laughs> Sonic. Uh, your we, we son, said, what was your Sonic we, order? Yeah. Oh, it's double cheeseburger, French toast sticks. I mean, che cheesy tots. I mean, whatever. I mean, I love Sonic, but we changed the lyric to McDonald's parking lot uh, just to make it more encompassing because McDonald's are pretty much everywhere. Um, but me and me and my buddy Hardy, a uh, great artist, uh, wrote that song. My, my friend Jordan Schmidt. I had that title to us. It did like, you know, to us, it means everything in the world, but to everyone else probably doesn't get it. You know, those little moments in the church parking lot or the hangouts afterwards you're like man i had the greatest time of my life and everyone's like in a parking lot <laughs> and you're like yeah well, you don't get it to us it did and all three of those guys including hardy he was just like man I i've lived that life too so it was another one that kind of we wrote so fast because we've lived it and we just started talking about our high school days and a bunch of nostalgic things and mm. so i'll tell us it did was written the other line that stuck out to me from that song too was that your first paycheck you get and you're like <laughs> yeah, it maybe wasn't big rich. but to yeah. us it was big yeah we were rich yeah i mean yeah first it didn't really make you rich but to us it did what was your very first job uh i was parking cars valeting cars oh yeah. nice yeah. okay not very good at it <laughs> <laughs> now when it comes to the rest of the project how did this differ from you know yeah. your album in 2018 the creation of it what did that look like in comparison yeah uh well some of the record was recorded during COVID, so uh you know playing with musicians with masks on uh it's a little different because when you're in the room and you're recording like you feed off each other and that energy and seeing someone smile when they hit a part and so it was a little different and we had to kind of get used to that. And then you, you had to see the smile through their eyes. Like when someone hits a riff, are you feeling that groove? It's like you're looking really deeper. Right. And it was just a little different. And, you know, recording during COVID, I would do a lot in my studio and send it over. That's the beauty, beauty of technology these days. I can do a vocal in my house and send it to my producer. He can edit something there and I can do a guitar part, send it back and forth where, you know, years ago, you'd always have to be in the same spot. And so. Yeah. No, we did learn how to do that, which I never have done a lot of. We usually just do it all in one spot, and then I go to another studio to do the vocals. But here, a lot of it was pieced all over Nashville in different spots, whether I was there or not, you know, and it was a, a pretty cool, unique way to make a record. And I've actually fell in love with doing it that way because it gives you a little time away from it after you record it. Like, we go into the major studio, get all the bones down, mm -hmm. and then we get to go home and kind of listen over and, and instead of having to force yourself to do everything that day, it gives you a little bit more time to live oh, with it. And it's pretty like cool. a little breathing room. What do you yeah, think about yeah. that? Do you think that's going to change the way that a lot of artists create music like moving forward? Yeah, I think that's just the way it's it's going anyway, regardless of COVID, just the technology and the way we, uh, you know, we, you know, we can send email, we can send files so quickly. Um, I think that's how we do it. I mean, if there's a guy in LA that's an incredible mixer, I can send that to him without him having to come down here to yeah, do it. And I think it's it, just kind of the way, yeah. yeah. I think it's just kind of way music's going anyway. Totally. And now you're back playing shows now. Yes. Take me back to that God. first show after a while. What did you, what was going through your mind right before you walk on stage? Well, Were first so off, didn't remember <laughs> lyrics. <laughs> like I haven't sung a lot of these songs in a while and to remember everything. And you just, just dusting off the cobwebs, but it's like riding a bike, I guess they say, or you just, you hop back on. It was, it was right back and people, human beings, interaction, feeding off that energy. There's nothing like it in the world. And it was, it was pretty special. And uh, I, you know, never want to take it for granted ever because, yeah. um, you know, when it's taken away, you just didn't realize how much you truly love it. You miss it. And it's, you know, it's what you dream of and then you get it and it happens and then you're on the road all the time and you're doing it. But then when it gets taken away, you're like, man, uh, this was my life and it's exactly. what I actually love to do. And now, yeah, like I said, I, I like to stand on the edge of the stage at the end and just look out and be like, let me take this in for a minute. This is awesome. Oh, my God. What's the most fun song people singing back to you? Like, what do you love to hear back? I mean, Drunk Me is always fun. We have a song. I told you, that's my favorite. Yeah, Drunk Me, yeah. I mean, we have a song called Bitches, Alcohol You Later. I mean, those are those are just our songs. Our fans love to sing. But now, yeah. truth about you, it's been incredible hearing people already <laughs> sing that one back. I don't know. Any, anytime a song sung back, it's great. Honestly, Bucket List was, is, a new, is a song that we had that yeah. was strictly out there in quarantine that we never got to play live. So it was really cool the first time to play it live after it had already done its thing. Um, it was really cool to see people sing that back for the first time when you never got that gradual watching people learn it as as the song comes out like it had already been out so that was a pretty cool moment yeah for and, sure and now do you have any other like post-show pre-show rituals that maybe you didn't have before <laughs> like now that you're back uh, i drink you're more laughing. i drink i drink more water now but i definitely uh 
I definitely still do the tequila. <laughs> I love the tequila. It's funny, actually. I asked Hardy this recently, and he yeah. was like, I pull, he's like, I pour two things of whiskey all the way up to the red line. He's like, then I yeah. go for it. Yeah, you got to. You got to get a little bit of buzz going on. And that then afterwards, so you got to, you got to calm yourself down after those stage jitters when you're done. So, oh, that's, that's so great. Mitchell Tinvini, thank you so thank much you. for being here. So great to you're see awesome. you again. You. And congratulations again. Midtown Diaries <laughs> out now. iHeartRadio, everyone, go stream it. Mitchell, thanks again. Thank you.